Welcome to Big Blend Radio with your hosts, Lisa and Nancy, editors of BigBlendMagazine.com. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Big Blend Radio's Dra- Traveling the Jefferson Highway Show. This is a show we do every fourth Thursday. And, you know, Nancy and I uh, publish Big Blend magazines, do regular Big Blend radio shows, and then also travel full time across the country on our Love Your Parks tour. And one thing we kind of got our foot into is the Jefferson Highway. This is a very historic highway that started in 1915. And you got to think about this because Route 66 is um, almost ready to celebrate its um, 100 year anniversary, which is very exciting. But you've got to think about how it's the, the what it's like to keep these highways alive through wars, through life changing, um, the world getting modernized. And that's exactly what this Jefferson Highway is like. Um, it runs from Winnipeg, Canada, all the way down to New Orleans. You can call it the Pines to Palms Highway or the Palms to Pines Highway, whichever way you want to take it or ride it. And um, it was started in 1915 by the editor of Better Homes and Gardens. And it's very exciting. This uh, June coming up is the conference for uh, the Jefferson Highway Association, the annual conference. They have a sociability cavern band going on, Um, a lot happening in Iowa. But today's show, and Nancy and I are starting to travel this, and we are actually in Oklahoma right now. And we like it here. We really do. do. It's it's beautiful. So Mm -hmm. we're going to be doing as much we've done a little bit of Iowa and um, a little bit of Kansas, done a little bit of Missouri, we've done a little bit of Texas. Sometimes we just didn't know what we were on, like we didn't know about the highway. Uh, We've done some in Louisiana, like Natchitoches, Louisiana, we cover that area a lot and that's on the highway. But we're gonna be doing some traveling, uh, so follow us on social media. We're gonna go up from um, Oklahoma up to Iowa soon. But today's show is about military history on the highway. We've done haunted history. We've done women's history, women outlaw history. We've done uh, African-American history. And today, again, military history is the topic. And so I encourage you to go to this one website, jeffersonhighway.org. That is the website for the association. They have an amazing Facebook group uh, to join as well. But as always, we have the Jefferson Highway president, Roger Bell, on the show, and he's being run around, uh, run around ragged a little bit. But I know he's excited because of the conference and the social ability caravan that's coming up. But welcome back, Roger. How are you? It's great to be back, Lisa. Thank you. Yay. Are you are you excited? I mean, this this I've heard that this conference is going to be like like one of the biggest um, you know, yeah, with what's it will happening. Be, uh, it's our largest registration conference we've had. We're, we've broken over 70. We've filled up the, it's going to be, we had the historic park in in Mason City, which was designed uh, by the famous architect Frank Lloyd Wright. Uh, we are, we've completely filled up the, the hotel. So that's kind of unique when you go to a conference and everybody staying in the hotel is in your conference. So um that's pretty cool so we we have that and we've actually have some extra uh space because of it's we're filled up at another hotel but we have uh everything seems to be going pretty well there and uh we have a good conference team uh a lot of my efforts been on the uh caravan which we featured in last month's episode and uh I'm just uh, really enthused by all the communities in Iowa that uh, are embracing us, learning more about us, uh, getting involved in this caravan. And uh, it's already been a success because of that. I mean, no matter what we do in the caravan, it's already been a success because of a lot of the uh, contacts and friends we've made over the last few months. That's it's a, it's very exciting um, to hear all of this and, you know, there's just so much to experience on the highway. And I think every time you do one thing, it leads to a gazillion others. And I think that's what's going to happen from this conference and the sociability caravan, because once you get on this, it is you you get absolutely addicted. Nancy and I just met up with our real good friends uh, from Holland um, in Nashville the other day. It was like we luckily I mean, we haven't seen them. how many years, seven years, Nancy. And mm-hmm. they um, document. Like document neon signs 
all over the country because they're we have a we have an epidemic of them going away because they're very expensive to have these historic neon signs that you would often see on Route 66 and small motels and you know in they're very interested in the Jefferson Highway and we got into that discussion and it's like he's like well we've done this now we might have to you know it's like kind of once you get the bug, I think you get the bug. And um, we were just talking about the amazing job the association has done in the communities of signage and people going out and painting what was the old bridge. And now we have the road, but like this was the old bridge. And to see all these communities come together, it's a very, very special, special time. So um, it, I, I just, we're addicted to it now. Roger, it's your fault. You mm -hmm. and Arlene from <laughs> Natchitoches. It's, you guys got us stuck in this. And so let's bring our, our guests on today. We have Adam Lynn, who is the director of Honey Springs Battlefield in, and Visitor Center in Shakota, Oklahoma. I'll get there. What's pronouncing everything here in Oklahoma. And I encourage you to go to the website. It's okhistory.org. That's a good name. I like that because, hey, listen, history rocks. Um, and then forward slash sites, forward slash Honey Springs. You can find them. Just type in Honey Springs, Oklahoma, and you'll find it. And also on Facebook. So welcome, Adam. How are you? Doing great. Appreciate you guys having me tonight. Hey, this is cool. So so you guys, are you on the highway itself or like a little detour? Um, so uh, we're, we're a little detour, um, but we're basically on the highway. It, uh, you know, during the conflict that took place here at Battle of Honey Springs, it was known as the Texas Road, and uh, that would later uh, merge into what would become the Jefferson Highway. Oh, wow, that's interesting. And so, this this was um, this was like a big battlefield, and really, was this mostly? It was yes. like Indian Indian territory at the time, so, right? But exactly, it was Indian territory, and there's several. There's several things that stand out historically, I um, always tell people, but this was the largest civil war conflict to take place in what is now Oklahoma, then Indian Territory. There were a total of 9,000 troops that fought here, and they were fighting over wow. control of uh, the Texas Road. So, um, you know, uh, it's also thought to be one of the most culturally diverse conflicts to take place in the entire civil war. So, yeah, there were 10 different tribal nations that fought here, and then there was an African-American regiment that fought in the middle of the Union lines for the for the for oh. the union wow wow and at that time were they buffalo soldiers or no? no they weren't called buffalo soldiers to my knowledge at that time but okay um you know uh, they had extra incentive to fight um knowing that uh they would be given no quarter should they be fought you know <clears throat> caught on the battlefield mm -hmm. you know and, mm -hmm. I, I know we're mm -hmm. going to go to texas next but i want you to just uh, before we go get susan on the line here um the texas road when you say that um we're all looking at dirt roads and this was not the truth can you <laughs> it's not, right. it look like that <laughs> can you tell everybody what the texas road is sure <laughs> sure yeah the texas yeah. road as it pertains to uh, uh the conflict here was a major military road by the time uh the civil war broke out but it, it started in the late 1700s as the osage trace or at least a portion of it did and then you know by the time settlers were settling texas it was it was known as the the Texas Road, and it was also mm -hmm. the precursor to the Chisholm Trail, uh, oh. which was uh, known as the oh. Shawnee Shawnee Trail. So, yeah. Longhorn cattle would have been driven up wow. from Texas through this through, through this road before the Civil oh. War. Oh, and oh, Adam, yes. you can uh, Adam, you can. And I've been there. You can actually see uh, portions of yes. the remainder of the road and different a parts. You, you certainly can. Uh, on trail three of the battlefield, we have five walking trails and over 50 interpretive signs, but on trail three of the battlefield, you can see the original remnants of the road. And wow. the, width, the, width, the width of the road would have varied based on the time of the year. It's not a road that we think of today, mm -hmm. um, but the general location of the road, you know, was in this area. Absolutely. Wow. Wow. So is this now, is it part of the historic, the National Historic Trail? Uh, uh, it is. Uh, it's part of the Oklahoma Historical Society, but we are a national landmark, yes. Okay. Wow. Okay. And yeah. so you're saying Osage, and it's not Osage, like I've been saying. Osage. No, yes. Osage. I know. Osage. Listen, half of these radio shows that we do are all about Lisa learning language, okay? <laughs> how to pronounce things. But, but hey, you don't know until you get there. That's, and that's right. how you. That's, that's right. how you get it. So, um, sure. so this is fascinating. So 
that trail, when you talk about cattle, we've been down to Bandera, Texas. And that was mm-hmm. like the, the, like that was, I mean, serious cowboy town. We saw truckloads of cowboys, literally. And, and I smiled. <laughs> I was happy about it. Well, they were well, cute. <laughs> one of the things about the Texas road, Lisa, too, is, you know, it, it, the whole theory of this is interesting because the Texas road was uh, very early, obviously. And then when the railroads came through, they used a lot of the, uh, the Katy Railroad in Oklahoma used a lot of it. So it was close by what the original Texas road. And then later on, the Jefferson Highway was most of it in Oklahoma was is very close to the Katy. So all three of these mm-hmm. are really close to each other. Absolutely. So it's really a so you're going back almost hundreds of generations when you're traveling the Jefferson Highway route here, where the Katy the railroads came through there. So you think of all the people that traveled on this route in different time periods. It's it's quite fascinating. Wow. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. I want to bring Susan on the show. Susan uh, Lanning is from the Audi uh, Murphy uh, and American Cotton Museum. So you can go to cottonmuseum.com. Uh, she's in Greenville, Texas, and she can kind of give us an idea where Greenville is on the map as well. Um, but this is really fascinating because it looks at the cotton industry and also some really uh, incredible, from what I'm going on their website, military exhibits to really look at the, the military heroes of their region and um i believe that audi is uh probably quite a hero so welcome to the show susan how are you thank you thank you for having me i'm doing great ah oh, this is fantastic yeah. now am i saying is it audi or audi see now i'm gonna get in trouble audi. again yeah it's, it's audi. audi oh i yeah. did something right good that's ex- excellent so greenville texas as long you know when you think about the jefferson highway um where are you based out of like if people think about Dallas or um, just even like East Texas, where where would you say would be the biggest area for people to understand where you are? Yeah, we're about 40 minutes east of Dallas. Oh, so actually pretty yeah, close. Yeah, right on I-30. Uh-huh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I've we've right we've on I-30. There. I know we've been there. Yeah, I <laughs> we're coming. We're coming back because we need to come see you for sure. And and look oh, at the yeah. museum. So can you give us a little bit about, because was, was the museum pretty, pretty much started because of Audi? Actually, no, we really started as um, kind, of, kind of like a county museum covering the whole okay. history of the county. And then we've been around since 1987. And so it's kind of gone through phases and changed over the years. And we moved over into cotton uh, started doing the cotton exhibits and were called the American Cotton Museum for a long time and then we started receiving some artifacts from Audie Murphy's family in the early 2000s and so then that's really changed a lot of what we did so we that's how we became the Audie Murphy American Cotton Museum in 2002. Oh and okay, so we've so- kind of in a way gone full circle yeah so mm-hmm. we we still cover the whole history of the county and so the museum is kind of divided into three sections. In the front section, you've got our history, our early history of how Hunt County got started and the people and the places and the businesses and all of that. Then it segues into the cotton history and talk about because Hunt County was really primarily known for, for a couple of main things. Cotton, cotton production was a big one um, once the first train came through in 1881 and up until like the late 40s and then it that all changed and then of course Audie Murphy uh, military Audie Murphy for those that don't know he was the most decorated combat soldier of World War II and he was born uh, in Kingston about 10 minutes north of Greenville. Most decorated soldier of World War II like that's huge Mm -hmm. and yeah every medal possible I'm on your website every medal possible including the Medal of Honor. And this was all before mm-hmm. he was 21 years old? Yes, he was young. He wow. uh, enlisted when he was only 17. He fudged a bit on his uh, birth certificate to get in because he wasn't 18. Oh, wow. um, mm. Like a lot of people back then, you know, he was born at home, so didn't even have a birth certificate. And so his sister, 
he talked his sister into getting one for him uh, so that he could enlist and they, they fudged a bit on the date. <laughs> hmm. I th- you know, I've heard some stories like that, you know, of, of know. yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, where people fudged and, and went for it. And do you think he did it because, hey, you wanted to get out of town or he just really wanted to go go and get in there and get in the good fight, as he, they say? He did. He really felt it was his duty to go after Pearl Harbor happened. And and it, you know, it totally changed oh, his life. Yeah. I mean, he was very poor growing up they were a sharecropping family um so they didn't have any money they moved around a lot um uh from kind of like rental house to rental houses they went for the to one job for another and and so you know i i think that happened and then he was like you know i can do this to help both my country and my family because there were a lot of kids in his family you know, mm-hmm. he was the seventh child, and he was not the youngest. Oh, what, a, what an amazing American story he is, too, um, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, he went on to be, he was an actor, uh, mm-hmm. and uh, I think even uh, was a songwriter, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, he's and, a songwriter, and a lot of people don't know that. Yeah, he's a songwriter. And, you know, it's just... Um, he came from such humble beginnings, and you know, and you know, war does is a horrible thing. And uh, how some young uh, teenager, basically, you know, uh, came out of the war like that, and just uh, you know, it's just totally different. It's just a great American story, and it's mm-hmm. one of the many great stories uh, along the Jefferson Highway, you know, and I started discovering this as you know several years ago one of the things i looked at is the different genres of interest you know we you've talked about some of them today lisa with the you know we we talked about the uh the western history with the outlaws and uh, the jesse james history and all the things i mean just amazing how it just ties to the route but the military is really fascinating to me uh, we think a lot of our military history didn't probably uh, happen in the middle of the country, but where else, what other route can you go on that has the World War One Museum and the World War II Museum on it? Yeah, I mean, uh, New Orleans and, uh, has some incredible... Kansas uh, New City Or- World War One Museum oh. was incredible. And then yeah. uh, you have, uh, you know, you can see things like this. You can see all the Civil War history. Mm-hmm. Uh, John Brown, uh, you know, was a lot of the war uh, early where was uh, involved uh, some of his efforts in Kansas and leading Kansas and it just it just goes on and on you can take you can do something on the military history almost the entire route and there's so a fort it, in Minneapolis the fort we were talking about the at the fort beginning in Minneapolis of the you know yeah. you're talking about in, in uh, Alexandria where the Louisiana maneuvers were in World War II and uh, uh, a lot of the great uh, decisions of D-Day were made uh, right there. Um, you know, it's it's fascinating to me why um, you know how much military history. You know, Fort Scott, uh, Kansas. You know, it's just mm-hmm. a lot to a lot to discover when you travel around. And and mm-hmm. um, Murphy we is by, one that really fascinates me. Uh, Fort Smith. <laughs> we just drove through Fort Smith yesterday. Um, on our way to Edmond, Oklahoma. And yeah, that's a little bit off our route, but obviously but kind of connected. Are traveling you know? the route, we we want to go over there because they have a big deal happening with uh, in the next few months with the United States Marshall Museum opening up in uh, Fort Smith. So um, it's wow. going to draw a lot of attention. So, but anyway, uh, uh, Mr. Murphy is just a fascinating um, uh, character, in my opinion. Uh, and mm-hmm. yeah, and I. I, mean, I, I I know his name from my grandmother who watched his films and right. she mm-hmm. thought he was the most handsome person on earth. <laughs> she was, no, she was a real groupie, you know, and said, so, and whenever I stayed with her, it's like, okay, there's an Audie Murphy, Murphy film. And some of them he wrote himself. Yeah. Like yeah. Um, the, the one she, I remember it's like to Helen back. That mm-hmm. was the, the big one that she just like, okay, it's time to watch this one. It's time to watch that one. And, you know, so when you, when you, you were talking about Audie Murphy, Murphy today, I was like, oh, wait a minute. I know that guy. 
I know who yeah. he is. <laughs> yeah, Isn't that because, wild? yeah, and I, wow, you know, he really he, he was a songwriter as well. Mm-hmm. And I so, believe, I, according to my grandmother, I don't know that he was a really good dancer too. Well. Ooh. <laughs> I have no idea if that's Audi, true. Audie Murphy on Dancing with the Stars. How how yeah. long did he? I mean, what was his? Did did he live for long or like what what happened? No, after? unfortunately. Oh, yeah, he I died in a plane asked. crash in seventy yeah, one. No yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh wow, wow. Okay, so that's well, that's sad, you know. But and, and yeah. then in that your community seems to still have more heroes too in the in surrounding the you know your whole area. Like okay, yes. so I'm <laughs> I looking know for at a this. small county. We're not very big, you know. Uh, there's about ninety thousand people in our county for. Oh. For a fairly small county, we've had a lot of interesting people come from here. I mean, if you've heard of General Claire Chenault, he was born over in Commerce. He was in charge of the... Um, the Flying Tigers. Uh, Flying Tigers, yeah, yeah, in the China India Burma Theater. Um, Whoa. We've had two of the Doolittle Raiders from this area. Wow. So, yeah. We need to come see you because I think these exhibits are so important to understand but you also have people that the world war one so you're covering world war one and world war two mm-hmm. right wow yeah well, uh, we actually go from uh civil war all the way through vietnam although of course oh. the largest exhibit is on world war ii wow so civil war ii so it was yeah mm-hmm. because you know the civil war that's that's really interesting when you think about it because you know it coming out west a lot of people always think civil war is back east. no it did come out west, and that's why I find mm-hmm. Missouri so interesting because that things. Well, I think that here. goes back to you know Hunting Springs and Adam. I mean, yes. a lot of people don't have any, you know, the uh, the a lot of people uh, with limited knowledge of the Civil War history, they did not understand uh, the battles in in the in the diverse battles that, that occurred in uh, in. Uh, the, the Indian Territory and uh, other areas nearby in Arkansas, and uh, sure. uh, mm-hmm. there's a fascinating stories uh, involved in them, and uh, um, they were uh, very influential. In fact, uh, uh, the last Confederate general to surrender was uh, was a part of the uh, battle at Honey Springs. Correct, Adam? No, he, he was, his troops were here, but he was actually sent on a diversionary attack to Weber's Falls, Stan Wadey. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, and I, and I also forgot to mention guys, we have a visitor center where we opened our, uh, permanent exhibits back in November. And oh. we have, a, we have a 3d theater that details the battle and its history, as well as the, uh, other exhibits that detail not only the battle itself, but the overall history of the civil war in Indian territory. And Roger, you you brought up a really interesting talk, topic as far as the different military engagements that took took place along the Texas Road. You know, Cabin Creek was another one that took mm-hmm. took place along the Texas Road, just quite close to Pryor. And and many of the same soldiers that fought at Cabin Creek would later, two yeah, weeks later which is fight. also on the Jefferson route. So exactly. It's... That's why. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So the stories uh, and backgrounds of those that fought at Honey Springs, that's what really stands out. And in um, and the diversity, as you mentioned, Roger, um, it's, 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 you know, and, and you had, and I have not had the opportunity to go down there. It's just, it's been on the back of my mind, like oh, I several to go Busy. down there and see you have, you have award-winning uh, video from what I can tell. That yeah. Just, and, and we have a documentary uh, just produced. It's called the battle of Honey Springs. And, um, you know, it, it it's about 30 minutes and and it details the history and, and really goes into detail on uh, not only the, the tactics here, but but the, the stories and the background of those who fought here. I mean, the, the Union soldiers, uh, in particular, Major uh, General James Blunt, the Union general here, mm-hmm. he had been an abolitionist. He fought in the Bleeding Kansas uh, years with uh, John Brown in Kansas. So wow, all, all of these histories tie together. It's absolutely amazing. It's, it's, it is, it's, it's like the crossroads of battle, you know, right. um, and, but then the Indians were also part of that, right? They, they absolutely were, uh, especially the five tribes who had been removed 
you know, in the early 1800s, they had made lives for themselves, you know, just got back on their feet. And there were divisions in particular between the Muscogee Creek Nation and the Cherokee Nation, um, dating back to the removal years where they where the they sided with both the Union and the Confederacy. By the time they fought here at this this conflict, they were fighting against their own tribal nations. So, wow. yeah, yeah, yeah there's a lot of a yeah. lot of history here. Yeah, that's and you do you uh, have a reenactment. So how often do you do your big reenactment? So we we do the reenactment every other year, and this this year it will be uh, held on November third, fourth, and fifth. Oh, oh, so everyone so can plan. We usually get several thousand people out for it. So hmm. um, be on the lookout. We have a Facebook page as well, New Springs Battlefield and Visitor Center. In addition to the, into our in addition to the website. And you can just, uh, you know, you can walk, see that you can see the, uh, the reenactment, but you, even it's just an experience to be out there and walk among the camp and see different re the reenactors. And that's right. How yeah, they it, do it to it me, means, it's just as important. To it do makes that. history it's come alive, thing. especially for kids. It does. For it kids does. to understand, you know, and, you know, I, you know, I think this is important too because I know that you know civil war and reenactments um, they've had some scrutiny too, and also going away. Even even mm -hmm. up in Gettysburg, they were at a point of losing enough people to actually be volunteers to do them. Mm -hmm. at, you know, mm -hmm. just a change of generation, and and mm -hmm. um, but there's been the scrutiny of okay, well, you know, is this a bunch of white guys you know fighting each other? And I've been through some. Mm -hmm. uh, reenactments and film some actually too. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. it's really hard to hold your, your, I don't care if you have a tripod and when those cannons go off, it's like, no, <laughs> yeah, fine Dude, seriously, oh, like you take, I mean, that's yeah. the thing when you go to a reenactment, it makes it so like understanding you, I don't care. Yeah. You know, this is a reenactment, but my yeah. heart just, just, you know, and one of the, like, one it, of the comments you, you made there, I mean, I, right. uh, we have the time I was last there, they had the uh, the first Kansas colored uh, reenactors. But that's what I was going to get to. Yeah, so, you, you know, you have, you have a the very diversity of it. Yeah, we do reenactors. We uh, do, and and we're working on that. Um, yeah. In addition to the reenactment, I forgot to say as well, we have a memorial every year. This year is going to be July fifteenth, and, oh. um, and and it honors the one hundred. This year will be the one hundred and sixtieth anniversary of the battle itself. So. Oh wow, that's wild. Yeah, yes. And, uh, and I think the other story here is, you know, Adam has been a part of uh, a renaissance of this because, I mean, the the site was uh, purchased by a lot of it was you know, people that wanted it to happen back in, I want to say, the early 1960s. That's, that's correct. Yep. And, uh, you know, they, they <laughs> it uh, is amazing the journey that this has be forgotten all this time and they acquired land did different things the state been involved but you could go down in my generation growing up nearby you could go down there and see the battlefield uh, but there was you know there was not the hit being able to tell yeah. the story of it there was right. no visitors there, and there was right. nothing like that and so adam's been part of the renaissance there which has brought all that mm. forward and uh it's um uh, you know, it has a, a state of the art interactive stuff now there and uh, to tell the story. And that's mm -hmm. a great, great accomplishment. Thank you so uh, much. We got we've got a long ways to go, but we'll get there. So, Adam, I wanted to go to the actual land itself because yes. of the name Honey Springs, because this yes. is something I always kind of I don't know, Nancy and I get into because we're always out in the wild. <laughs> so, I, yeah, absolutely. Somewhere. But um, <laughs> it's because when you think about battles. And you think of like the Louisiana maneuvers, right? Right. You know, they, they take, you know, here's a bunch of people, you know, hey, we're going to go fight. We're going to do this. And next thing you know, you're going through the swamps of Louisiana, riding in tanks going, what did I just sign up for? Right. right. You got Fort Polk down there and everything. And it's like, you know, or in, even when you, you know, when Susan was talking about Vietnam War, it's like, okay, all right. You may have been, you know, living in Oklahoma, but now you're going to go to Vietnam. Have fun. You know, yeah. it's like two different territories <laughs> when you fight a battle. And right. it's, um, that's what's, when you read battle strategies and how things happen, like the Battle of New Orleans to me mm. is still one of the most fascinating battles that happened and how mm. the, the Indians did come to, to fight for, 
New Orleans, you know, and, and right. how Andrew Jackson got involved. And then like just how everybody came in right. blew my mind about that. But it was it came about knowing the territory and the land. Yes. So, and, so and Honey Springs had to be fascinating about the territory with this. It's, it's absolutely right. Uh, the inhabitants of uh, the tribal nations really wanted to remain neutral because they had been mm-hmm. removed, you know, years earlier and um, they were yeah. just starting to thrive. And approximately 100,000 inhabitants uh, in Indian territory uh, before the Civil War broke out. And um, they had to make a tough decision. Um, the forts had been abandoned by the federal forces uh, where they diverted uh, men, goods, supplies to the east. And that opened a vacuum for the Confederate uh, government to sign alliances with the five uh, tribes. And then, like I said earlier, there were splits that didn't want to fight for uh, uh, the Confederacy and ended up fighting for the Union. But really, the boils down to is they they wanted to remain neutral, but um, they had to make a difficult decision on both sides there. Wow. Wow. That's, and do you yeah. have springs? Like yeah, We do. It's, and it's in our monuments area, which is located roughly where the Confederate Depot would have been located. So oh, it, wow. that's Trail 6, the battlefield. That's actually the first stop on the on the battlefield road that you'll see the monuments area in the Honey mm-hmm. Springs area. So you talk about the Confederate mm-hmm. Depot. So that's another piece of history to touch on is mm-hmm. um, Confederate flags, Confederate, like you go to Gettysburg, you can see that too. Um, you go, I, I'm just using Gettysburg, you know, because we're talking about the Civil War, but um, that's something that, uh, mm-hmm. that, yeah, how do yeah. you interpret that? Is, is an in, are we in an interesting time of that to, to interpret that? And in, isn't that Part of the importance of going yeah within the historical sides, context you know we, yeah. we do have we do have memorials to all those that fought here on both sides but uh, historically we want to tell the tell the story historically accurately you know accurately so mm-hmm. and, and we include include the stories of, of, of both sides that fought here so yeah i, I think so, it's a very and, tender thing right now but there's also like i remember going to little rock at, at the state museum and they have a memorial section for um, some of the soldiers in the Civil War, but they were honored because because they really stood up for their land. Because it's not always right. it. It's also about family and land and yes. and yes. their territory. Okay, yes. so it's not Civil War is a little different than what we all just you know yes you know say and, and, you can't make it's not black and white. Yeah, and, it, exactly. Go ahead. Yeah, you've got to look like Stonewall Jackson and people that people may not like Alan, what Andrew Jackson, how he helped um, New Orleans, right? Like people don't mm-hmm. like Andrew Jackson, but he did it, man. And mm-hmm. so, like, it's a very complex thing when we get into mm-hmm. these stories of of battles and sides. But mm-hmm. when somebody has done a really good battle and really, you know, strategically made things happen mm-hmm. and led their their men. I mean, you've got to, whether you like them or not, you've got to also kind of honor that they fought right. for something yeah. they believed and, in. And 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 both sides do. They absolutely fought for what they believed in um, here at Honey Springs. So uh, we, uh, like I said, it, it, it's it's complex, but it's it's really fascinating if you can you know, uh, and read you more know, about it. Both of these locations are ones that people probably don't um you know unless you're into this history you don't necessarily seek out all the time but right. you know just like on uh honey springs the the jefferson highway route that will be marked in oklahoma uh, later this year um the turn that you really need to go to get to where they are is right you know is right on the route you know otherwise if you're on the main highway it's hard to it's kind of hard to even find you adam it is, and I, I and, it's a challenge. and there's no exit there. You have to go back, uh, basically on the uh, the what is the, the, the highway the, route, right? And right. Uh, you know, we, we you know this is why we want to work together with this is we we create Absolutely. these tourism links, and we create these things because this is a place. Uh, I think that uh, you know, being in Oklahoma, and I know that every Oklahoma, I think, got a uh, spend an afternoon and, and see the battlefield there. I, I, I can't imagine them not uh, enjoying it. And, uh, 
Uh, and uh, it's just, um, it's part of the heritage that uh, you seek out. And it's the same way with, you know, Greenville. I haven't mm-hmm. yet been there, but, uh, you know, there's probably, uh, you know, if, if I asked my son who Audie Murphy was, he wouldn't know. But if I, you know, if I told him his history <laughs> and explained it, I know he would be fascinated. Yeah, mm-hmm. like I remember and, the story and, uh, now when Susan came on, I was like, oh, yeah, I get it now. And I know that story, you know, that past. Mm-hmm. But Susan, do you get a lot of people coming in because of him, like knowing the story and wanting to be who, you know, just going to honor him, maybe not even be we connected do. to the town? We do. And what's interesting, too, is is kind of partly depending upon their age. Some of them know him more from the military yeah. aspect, while others mm-hmm. knew him more from the acting um, yeah. aspect. Oh, wow. And then we also have some, a lot of people also don't realize that there is still to this day a Sergeant Audie Murphy Club in the Army. Oh, and wow. so, yeah, wow. so m- most cool. soldiers know who he was or they learn who he was. Um, early on and that is something that is very unique and mm. extremely difficult to get into it's it's something that you can't that that a, another soldier has to nominate you to even be able to try um, wow. and it's not for officers at all so so it's it's yeah well so many actors have played in in films war films that um you just go anybody in a film about a war is going to be an actor and here's mm-hmm. somebody who comes along he's an actor he's a singer and he and, did it and he and he actually was in the military and he actually did see combat so it's kind mm-hmm. of it he's very different than than what you would normally expect to see mm-hmm. right and he was also very little yeah, uh, you know yeah. they don't. They don't yeah. You don't. People don't realize, um, especially in the movies. You know they kind of hide that. Um, they had to do something because he was not always taller than the female actresses. No. So I, yeah, he was only five this. five when he enlisted. So yeah. so very little He's a tiny guy. Um, yeah. yeah, he actually yeah. grew a tiny little bit while he was overseas, <laughs> which was unusual. One of the and one of the things we you know I did a. Uh, year or so ago i was doing a series on our facebook page of all the statues on the route and you have a you have a really a beautiful statue out front is that correct yeah memorial for audie murphy yeah oh, a, oh, actually cool. a local sculptor did that and he did oh, an cool. amazing yeah. job yeah. yeah it is oh mm. and, and speaking of that you know our little jaunt that we did you know roger you know, I'm just like, here, Roger, we're here, we're here, we're here. He goes, go here. Right. I'm like, we can't, we're going off in this. Because there's different parts of, like, you, you you can't just drive straight through. There's like, like, once you get on the, like I said, it, it's the bug bites, it's, 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 a, it's a happy, happy, joy, joy thing to experience. But like, we're on this side, that side. But um, we went to Leon and um, I photographed the, um, the Freedom Rock. Uh, that was mm-hmm, done mm-hmm. and um that is a memorial there so you know oh they have d daryl johnson johnston that was painted on this memorial rock and mm-hmm. so it's like okay you go there and now i'm gonna have to look him up um, <laughs> that's what's gonna happen you know you go and you see these things and and it's at the courthouse right near where the jefferson highway sign is the interpretive sign uh, explaining some of the history um but that's the thing, when you go down the highway, go into these small communities and you will find a memorial. And I, I think courthouses are a good place, wouldn't you say, Roger, to go find some of the, um, you know, the war memorials for people. In the yeah, well, there's, there definitely is. And there's, you know, there's, there's like, I, like I said before, you will, every time I, I'm not about ready to start as I go back up into Iowa here and, I'll be going through the Kansas route on the way to Iowa. Uh, I'll, I know I will discover things that I had no idea existed uh, mm-hmm. because that's what it is. It, it's a, it's, it's you just, uh, it's an Americana experience and you're always finding new stories and new things that uh, really bring the route alive as we move forward. We're certainly not, you know, 
uh, known like Route 66 or even the Lincoln Highway, but Colster on the route uh, being a north-south route is is really a fascinating. And uh, when you travel it, um, uh, you know, from Louisiana all the way to Minnesota, there's just so many different elements to see. And the military history, yeah. of, uh, as we're talking about today, is just is just one part of that. You know, that, that's the thing. Yeah, when you think about also the Midwest and you're talking about, you know, there's the Dust Bowl and things that did happen, right? And people did migrate out of the area and a lot of them became military heroes. And so I think that's the other thing to look at is, you know, some of the heartlands, like people moved out of areas and and I wonder if that comes back to the communities, you know, people who went out of the region. Um, I know it's not all there, but um, history did change, didn't it? You know, for, for part of the Midwest and people did move and then they did fight and did serve. Yeah. So I wonder about people coming home to their roots, mm -hmm. you know, after going well, to I war. I think it's hard when military come back, if they've seen combat, it's not the easiest thing because it's yeah. like, how much do I tell? Mm -hmm. You don't want to make your family feel bad. Mm -hmm. um, I know when we lived in 29 Palms, there are a lot of military around and you could see that um, it's not an easy thing to go to combat and come back, especially in wards that were um, unpopular, like Vietnam was an unpopular war. And mm -hmm. so when you, when you look at different periods of history, you know, it's like you go to serve your country and then you come home and, and uh, Vietnam wasn't popular, so people are mad at you. You know, and it's mm -hmm. so it takes a lot, you know, and I think for some people, like somebody like Audie Murphy, who's extremely creative, I think it's and and smaller in stature, I think it's mm -hmm. even harder. Yeah, you know? yeah, and go ahead. I was just gonna say what amazes me the probably the most about him is the fact that he did do the movie to Helen Beck, which was based mm -hmm. on his life. I yeah. To yeah. basically relive your experiences. I kind of wonder if it might have been kind of, you know, maybe a form of therapy for him. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Just to get get it all out and say what it was really like. But but also, yeah, that's, yeah, that's got to be really interesting to be in a movie that's really about your life. I mean, that's yeah. that's pretty unique. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wait, how many people get to do that? Or you uh, know? not very many. I there's <laughs> hardly any. But when, but, when you know, when yeah. it, you, you talk a little bit. You know, think about you're talking about the ones that came back. You know, you you talk mm. about the ones that you know. Adam is how much you know being on the soil. Mm -hmm. that they were fighting for in the civil mm -hmm. war mm -hmm. and um as adam was saying earlier you know the, the tribes were you know there was they were mm -hmm. they were they were being moved here yes uh and they were they, but they had established governments they were starting to mm -hmm. uh, um yeah be okay and then all of a sudden this war this this war broke out and they were caught in and it devastated um, mm. uh, a lot of the things that they had built, and uh, oh, yeah. it took it took uh, quite a bit of time. Uh, uh, and then the railroad came in the 1870s, but uh, it, it it was, uh, it was a major upheaval of people, and not not only mm -hmm. only the people that fought in the battle, but uh, the whole uh, the whole nations. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and there were huge population decreases as a result. Right. In particular, you know, Muskogee Creek Nation, I believe they lost 24% of their population. Oh, wow. You That's know, sad. And, That's uh, a lot. You know, and, and the Cherokee Nation's close to it. But, you know, homes were burned and, and people lost their loved ones. Um, and, and I and, think a lot of folks don't really realize what these tribes, I mean, I think they think of the Native tribes that they were out here, maybe in teepees and Right. No, this that was not the case. Mm -hmm. uh, they they uh, they were very uh, a lot of them were very cultured, mm -hmm. uh, had fine homes, uh, 
and uh, they, a lot of them were burned, uh, of course, and destroyed during this time period. So. Yeah, and Honey Springs was a Muscogee Creek settlement. I mean, it, mm -hmm. uh, they they had buildings, the toll toll bridge, which you can see the rem original remnants of uh, on the battlefield on Trail Four wow. too. And you think about that as a, it's kind of traumatic, not kind of, it is because, yeah. you know, these kind of things are traumatized, like they go through your yes. DNA, you know, your family history. And to think, you know, they got removed, they got displaced, you know, right. hair cut off. All, right. all, we all know the horrors. And um, mm. if you don't go, go look it up. Um, seriously. Um, and, and it's, it's just, you know, now we're going to go do this. It's like the Navajo code talkers too, you know, mm -hmm. um, you know what they did. Is, and so that's, I just kind of feel like, you know, they, they've done so much. And yet right. then here you've got the tribes actually fighting each other. That's so. Well, and then within, within yeah. another few decades, you know, their, their mm -hmm. land was basically split yes. up in allotments. And the, yeah, yeah. The, re and, the reconstruction uh, treaties of 1866. Oh, wow. You know, that mm. was. Huge. It didn't matter which side they fought for. They were basically, yeah. you know, treated the same you know, way. I, I wanted to ask this. I know this is just off the wall kind of question, but, you know, when we think about, we, we, we do so many military history programs and there's, you know, you, you serve in the military and then, um, you know, there's programs to help once you leave service, right? Whether it's education, um, all those kinds of things. Mm -hmm. But when it was like, the Civil War, I don't think we had any of that kind of stuff, right? We didn't have any kind of anything to really help this, those who fought, did we? Um, and, and if they were African American and if they were Native American, would they have gotten the same help at that there time? There was a sanit sanitation commission, helped, helped some soldiers, more so probably in the East, you know. Right. But even for a large number of people here, it didn't. There was not a lot of help. They had to go to other places. They were dispersed to, to all the way from to North Texas after this conflict here to, to Kansas. To be honest, with Kansas, you. yeah, yeah. Wow. So, you know, people wow. they they eventually did come back, and what what they they a lot of them right. came back to, you know, overgrown fields. Um, mm. They lost their livestock and everything that wow. they had worked for ever since they had been removed here. So wow, yeah. and yet they they fought in yes. the war. And, so and some some argue yeah. this was almost as is is devastating on the some the tribal populations as as the Trail of Tears. Yeah, yeah. I, I think it's mm -hmm. a, a something that's not really um, thought a lot about, but yes, right. it, it was. And and then th there was, uh, you know, we wonder today why. Uh, uh, we hear a lot about the Trail of Tears, but this this time mm. period was a really devastating, um, and it took yep. a, quite a bit to come back from it. Um, yep. And it shaped how it would later be formed as a state, good or bad. Right. Mm. Yeah, yeah, and that that's a thing. It's like we have to keep that history alive, right? So people mm -hmm. understand and interpret and ingest it. I think mm -hmm. going to museums, you know, and there's something like when you're talking about your visitor center to at honey springs but also susan you know of, of the cotton museum everyone cottonmuseum.com gotta plug it um go in <laughs> when you go to these museums you're looking at people's personal artifacts whether it's their uniform their shoes Amazing. their gun maybe a diary when you experience that and you're talking even your county history which i think is so fantastic because you know, like I always go into family history and genealogy. Oh, Roger, another show on that. Hey, mm -hmm. <laughs> just saying. Um, and movie, we could do movie history on the route. I'm just saying, Roger, rabbit hole, rabbit hole. Um, <laughs> we can get Susan back on. Um, when, when, you know, you go into a museum like that, do you see that? Because I saw on your site that you do a lot with, you know, children's programs. Do, mm -hmm. When they start to see like how little we were as human beings, right? <laughs> Number one, back mm -hmm. in the day. <laughs> and then seeing That's cotton yeah. and, and, and understanding how they're, the civilization, this, you know, it's really, you know, museums showcase how the history of human beings, how we started farming and, oh, now we're going to be civilized and yet we're mm -hmm. going to, you know, go kill each other in wars. You know, it's kind of a interesting thing. So 
you take kids around, do they kind of get that understanding that somberness? Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. And they ask a lot of questions, especially we have in the museum, a little outfit that a four-year-old boy wore um, when Hmm. he was traveling by wagon. I get a Hmm. lot of them to ask about that outfit and I tell them what happened. The little boy unfortunately got sick on the, on the journey and didn't make it. But his oh. family kept that outfit their entire life and then passed it down um, mm. to their descendants until it came to us. And it's like, they're like, wow, okay. So somebody that was like, you know, just like us, you know, um, but unfortunately didn't, didn't survive the journey. Mm. But they kind of oh, start wow. to relate then. Wow. You it's know like the little drummer me? boys and the little pipers oh. that go out in the battle. That just freaks me out that these mm-hmm. kids are out there. Yeah. playing music while they're yeah. blowing cannons and killing each other in a marching line it just it's still just it like i wonder i wonder if he had to get parental consent to go out there and do that for the for or, civil war demonstrations no i no, mean no for real for, like for real the kids, the like kids. The little drummer boys that were like they you know in i think the they're going to be orphans most oh, of the time yeah. maybe yeah, it's like yeah. who who let that happen? Adam, you have, you uh, have a lot of uh, school groups and stuff like that. Come we to, do, to, yeah, um, and we're getting more now, you know, now that we're fully open. So we right. we tell the hmm. the story of the diversity here. Obviously, the battle and the tactics. I mean, there's so many different elements to it: military history, social history, economic history. You know, down the line, and. Uh, we we try to do the best we can to to relate that to the students, and they all they all really enjoy coming out here. Um, and the visitors enjoy the new visitor center as well. So, oh yeah, that, that's great about the visitor center. What mm. being out in the battlefield area? Mm-hmm. That I mean, do you feel that too? Just even going to work there, do you kind of? I like yes. going to battlefields gives me the the. I don't want to say heebie-jeebies, but it makes things very very real very quickly. It does make it real. Um, it feels like I know this. This is a word that's used a lot, but it really is hallowed ground. People fought mm-hmm. there for what they believed in, and we we do the absolute best we can to honor those individuals who fought here. And um, you know, uh, almost two, uh, approximately two hundred people gave their lives here, and mm-hmm. and about one hundred and forty uh, Confederate soldiers. I forgot to mention this early. Who pa- earlier who passed away here were. Uh, we're buried in one or more graves on the battlefield, and they're still out there. Wow. Let's say oh, we wow. don't know where that is, correct? Adam? We don't know where that is. No, uh, we mm-hmm. there have been studies conducted in the past. Um, we don't we don't know for one hundred percent sure yet. But when we do, we'll definitely wow. mark those mark that area and honor those wow. soldiers. Wow. wow! Well, talk about some deep wow. history, peoples. <laughs> Roger, you, you always point us in the right direction and get good people on our show. So, you know, the highway provides, man. You've got to go. You, that's just the thing. Go out there. You know, when we started just, this a while uh, back, you told you, you made a comment we're never going to run out of stories. And I, I don't think that's we right. will. I mean, uh, <laughs> no, just, it's, uh, it's no. And then going on there. it. I mean, I've well, got yeah. about six to 10 uh, shows of mine right now. I know. <laughs> it, 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 uh, it is. Uh, it's, it's a bug. fascinating, you know, when this well, came what's, up. What's so. fascinating to me, you know, was, you know, we've done parts of the highway with like in Texas, done Gladewater, um, but I didn't know about the highway then, you know. Oh, I knew, but I didn't know, like, I didn't get the route 100%, yeah, you know, right. like I do now. And, um, and listen, if you go on the website, jeffersonhighway.org, and you click on that map and you put it on your phone, I'm telling you, it helps you so much um, get out there and do things and, see eight-sided barns and like all this stuff this is americana and we are losing our americana like i was talking about our friends with the neon signs and they're like these signs in in one day they lost three signs Mm -hmm. not them like yeah we lost Mm -hmm. them in our country going into people's private collections Mm -hmm. and it's become things that are novelties in people's bars and 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 yet the people that sell them actually need the money because they're in really tiny towns that need they need the money and so we have this going on in our country with Americana going away. And that's why museums and battlefields, like we're talking about today, 
these places are so important and to they keep are. it alive and the highway mm -hmm. the value of the highway mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. beyond anything that i think any of us could ever calculate when it comes down to people actually getting on the highway exploring so it's, it's um, kind having of a time memories portal. You yeah, know, it is. It, it, you know, you've, you, you know, we, we, we think of the Jefferson Highway as a time period. You said 1915, so you think of it during the time period it was there. And it, it was, but a lot of our travelers that were traveling the highway, even in the 20s, were stopping at some of these historic sites and places along the route. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and uh, it's the same thing today. It's, uh, there's, there's just Americana around every turn. Uh, and, and we are losing it. And both of these, uh, sites would not have happened if they weren't these wasn't for people that saw the value to preserve it right. and mm -hmm. uh you know i know honey springs is a great example of that because you know there was tons of efforts in acquiring this land yep. for this and yep. there was people that dreamed Brings to me one of my uh, early history teachers and and uh um, middle school was highly involved in honey springs research way back and, oh wow uh, and uh, I, I, uh, I got fascinated in it uh, from him, but you know, it's just uh, these people saw that and they worked and they, they did a lot of the efforts and, and yeah. the same thing I'm sure happened in the Murphy Museum with people collecting his artifacts and doing the things mm -hmm. that, to honor these folks. And, and it doesn't take you know, if people just take the time to visit them uh, they will uh, they will really enjoy it yeah. I, exactly and um mm -hmm. to all those preserving history we give a big shout out susan um your community obviously stepped up to make sure this museum happened to to document this history yeah they did and they did i i think it's awesome. i want to say this about small towns there's no town too small to save your history people right. come home people want to generations down the road want to know who their ancestors were and they want to step foot there whether it's a battlefield that's a somber thing to do but it means yeah. that connection is so huge when you do yeah um and whether it's a museum that actually has a history that you're trying to understand um mm -hmm. it, it's, a, it's such a huge thing and so preserving these these you know artifacts uh, if historic photos people do this they throw historic photos away oh, i don't know who these people are just toss them don't oh do it no. don't do it no. don't do it don't do it um there's so much to learn um from the past and the highway is that and at the same time you can get some really darn good food you can have some scenic drives um see awesome public art I mean, there's there's all kinds of nature experiences um, to have on the on the highway too. Sure. So there's so much. So everyone, JeffersonHighway.org is the website. Uh, the conference is coming up. So Roger, what happens if someone wants to join the caravan or the conference last minute, or just go to like a like? Can I just um, hop into an event? Like what? The best step now? is probably just to email us immediate uh, as soon as you can at info at JeffersonHighway.org. Uh, okay. I don't know. By the time this broadcast uh, happens, hopefully our website will be up where our providers got some problems right now. We're trying yeah. to get that. So you can't. Mm -hmm. But otherwise, you could mm -hmm. go there and get some information. Uh, if you want to know more about the caravan, go on to YouTube and just uh, search Jefferson Highway Sociability Caravan. And there's a video that will come up that will give you some insight into what we're doing. Uh, we're going three days through Iowa together, stopping uh, at places, communities are embracing us and hosting everything from ice cream socials to all kind of different events. I want some ice cream. Uh, we've even got a few surprises in store that I'm, I have, I'm not divulging yet uh, in a couple of communities. And uh, we're doing a, 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 a passport where we have stamps these communities are coming up with their own stamps and we're going to uh, so everybody that has their whole uh, stamps going to get a special prize at the end we're having a photography contest it's just going to be cool. a lot of fun and you don't have to do the whole route if you're in there in iowa or missouri whatever you just want to come up for a portion of a day we'd love to have you so just send us an email to info at jeffersonhighway.org we'll send you all the information and uh, get you registered there is no really cost to it 
uh, other than just uh, taking care of your own expenses. We do have some souvenirs and stuff that are available also for purchase. So. Right on, right on. Cool. Um, so everyone, jeffersonhighway.org, but, uh, and yeah, the server issues do kind of take 48 to 72 even. hours. Is, is mm. this Sunday, so, um, but uh, they also have a fabulous Facebook group, the uh, Jefferson Highway Facebook page, and then the Jefferson Highway discussion group, which is super cool. You're always checking out something cool there. Um, Adam, I, I want to ask you before you go, sure. um, have you asked Carrie Underwood to write a song about Honey Springs? I think she should. Wow, that's a great idea. <laughs> Next time think? I see her, I'll do that, which I've never yeah. met her before, but that would be awesome. But I'm just saying, I mean, yeah, it, it, that's her back, back, you know, backyard of, of history. Right. And um, yeah, I think yeah. she should write a song and, and yeah. sing one mm. or get someone to write it on Honey I Springs. Ah. What? I mean, good, that's a great. good song. Or yeah, yeah, I mean, I'm just bringing that music back in. But everyone, again, thank you, Adam Lynn. Uh, again, Honey Springs Battlefield and Visitor Center. You can find mm -hmm. them on Facebook, too. Or go to okhistory.org forward slash sites forward slash Honey Springs. Just type in Honey Springs uh, Battlefield. But I, I will have the link in the show notes. Everything we're talking about, the links will be in the show notes, no matter whether you're listening on Facebook or YouTube or Apple or Google or wherever you're listening. Um, it will be linked in from there. So thank you, Adam. And thank you. Uh, Susan, thank you for joining us. I'm so glad yeah, you, we connected fun. and that you could come on yeah. the show today. Cottonmuseum.com is the website, and um, we hope to see you too and and uh, come out to the museum and, and visit Greenville, Texas. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. You've already got your music, apparently. You know, Audie decided <laughs> to write for you. So, you know, mm -hmm. but um, do you have good food? We do. Yeah, we do. Okay. Well, just and making sure. We, we have but, music here too. Uh, across the street from our visitor center is that's the right. Oklahoma Blues Hall of Fame. And they're what? having, oh. their, yeah, they're having their annual induction ga uh, gala uh, this Saturday at 2 30. So, what? Yeah. Yes. So, you have a that? Blues Hall of Fame? Well, and I don't it, know about it. Oh, my and, gosh. And we're, we're located in, in Rennie'sville, actually. I mean, we, we have a Shakota address, but we're closer to Rennie'sville. And it's Dakota. one of 13 all African-American towns remaining in Oklahoma. What? Wow. Mm -hmm. That's okay. a whole other show. Yeah, <laughs> sorry. Oh, yeah. No, I want to go. I want to go. Like, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a blues wow. singer and, and yeah. writer and all that. I'm a blues musician. I want to go. I yeah, want to, it's, it's, I, it really is. It's amazing. Oh, my gosh. You I might have no like, idea. You might like one of the Mercy Me uh, bandmates is from Greenville. Really? And also uh, Colin Ray, yeah. Oh, wow. Oh, my oh. gosh. Okay, so, <laughs> all right. So, Roger, cue up another music show. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> we did one, but it was on jazz. <laughs> so. Yeah, well, we're, we, we, mm -hmm. listen, I've, I've got people all up and down the highway of all genres of music from Hello. blues mm -hmm. to um, Rock Dixieland or... jazz to heavy metal. Yeah. Yeah, you, um, yeah, you can you can have heavy metal <laughs> on the highway. That's the that's the, the no, music of boy. The, you know. <laughs> it, listen, when you're on the highway, sometimes you need it. You know, yes. I'm just saying I drive and once in a while right. you have to wake up. But um, <laughs> but anyway, I don't. Uh, yeah, I didn't play heavy metal when we did the Jefferson Highway because you were stopping. I no. mean, I wanted to stop every five feet, you know, it's like, <laughs> look, there's this and there's historic signs. And when you get to Texas, you're in big trouble because Texas is the state of historic signs. I think your state That's wins correct. of every historical marker. Just stop that every five minutes. Correct. Stop, stop, stop. <laughs> Whether or not it's legal, I don't know. But you must stop at it, even if it's illegal, because that's a historical marker. And um, yeah, it's awesome. I do want to give a big thank you to Anacadish uh, Convention and Visitor Bureau, who is on the Jefferson Highway. They have a new Jefferson Highway sign, right, Roger, in Natchitoches, Louisiana, uh, yes. for the tourist camp. That's a new thing. And they yes, have a Jefferson the, Highway Park. Go on ahead. the campus of Northwestern mm -hmm. State University. Yes. yes. Yep. Mm -hmm. They're not far from Alexandria, which we'll be talking about later on some other shows um, that, mm -hmm. that we were talking about Louisiana maneuvers that happen in Kasachi Forest, not so far from Natchitoches, Louisiana. And their folk festival, speaking of music, is coming up in July. And you're going to want to go to that. It's one of the best events on the planet. Um, so Natchitoches is 
Natchitoches.com is the website to go to. It's the oldest settlement in the state of Louisiana. And um, you can go to N-A-T-C-H-I-T-O-C-H-E-S.com. See, getting a little Mickey Mouse kind of song there. But Natchitoches is a place you want to go to. And you've got to eat a meat pie when you're there. You've got to go to the Jefferson Highway Park. And you've got to enjoy Cane River Lake and all their historic sites. And go to the cemetery. Don't you think, Nancy? Everyone has to go to the cemetery. If you go to oh, Natchitoches, yeah. go to mm-hmm. the cemetery. It's very cool. It is. Thank you, cool. everyone. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. Thank you, guests, for joining us. It's been a true pleasure. And keep up with us at BigBlendRadio.com. Thank you all so much. Thank you. Thank you.